Good morning and welcome to a Tech Talk Tuesday that's gonna get aired on Wednesday. They're back. And today's Tech Talk is not about tech that I use. Well, it's, it's a tech that I use, but it's not about like why I use it and how I use it. It's actually how you guys can do things on your Roubaix or Diverge. So before we dive in and actually get to it, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adjusting or changing the booster spring in the future shock. But before we do that, let's let's show you what we got. Let's show you what's, uh, what's inside of it and the tools that are gonna be required. Now, here I have three springs. If you own a Roubaix and are watching this video, this is what is inside of yours currently. It comes with the intermediate size stiffness spring. It's gonna come with these two in a bag. Now we keep these here. Um, if a customer ever wanted to get one, we could just swap it out for you. If you ended up acquiring these and you wanna do this service yourself, bada bing, bada boom, you can do it. If not, come and see us at Kinetic and we'll make sure to do it for you, make sure it's done properly. Um, but. I just want to show you anyways, it's kind of cool. And I did double check before diving into this topic that this info is readily available to consumers so I don't get myself in trouble. We're good. Um, but yes, black spring is currently in the Roubaix. The blue spring is the lightest spring possible and the yellow spring is the stiffest spring possible and is the spring that comes in the diverge. Now something to also uh, dissect. The Future Shock has two springs. It has its main spring that sits in the bottom of the Future Shock, and then it has its booster spring, what these three are on top. Now, the main spring on a Roubaix is a linear spring. It's perfectly wound, okay? And then the Diverge has a progressive spring. Now, if you're gonna be here this coming Saturday for our clinic, it's gonna be, uh, you're gonna learn about all this. Um, I'm just gonna barely scratch the surface of that. These are the necessary tools to do the service. First, you need T25, or in my case, a T25, because I'm gonna need to remove my stem from the, the, uh, from the actual future shock. The future shock itself can stay in the bike, so either a T25 or a four millimeter or a three millimeter um, to loosen the stem. And a, a, a 20, meter, 20 millimeter cone wrench gets the job done. Now, I actually think that this tool gets the job done a little bit better than the 20 millimeter, an adjustable, smooth jawed plier. Uh, I can actually grip it, it doesn't slip off, it doesn't mar up my little future shock. I like this tool far better, but if you don't have it, you can use your cone wrench. So let's dive in. All right, so first we're gonna remove the top cap. Now, remove the stem. Perfect. Let it hang down, don't let it fall or scratch anything. Then remove this main sleeve that makes the future shock diameter the actual inch and an eighth stem diameter. Boom. Now we're gonna take our 20 millimeter box wrench and we're gonna, now note that the future shock is still locked in, locked in tight. We're going to brace the wheel. I've got the wheel brace with my, my shoe. Now you see it slips off, but crack that free. Now here's where I actually like to come into play with these bad boys, right? Use this the whole time and just keep it keep it locked. You know what I mean? Now, you should be able to, at a certain point, loosen it by hand. Boom, little cap. All right, now, out, disconnect here, comes our, our spring. Boom, place that aside. Now, say we happen to have a Roubaix, right? Now why why would I want to replace this? Say I had a Roubaix that doesn't already have the stiffest spring in it possible. Why would I want to replace this? Now let's say we had a really, really, really light rider, um, very small rider that is doesn't feel like it's getting the full um, suspension quality. Now this isn't actually suspension, let's remind you of that. This is unsprung, it's above the bike and the only amount of pressure that's being put on this is the amount of pressure that gets put on a rider's hands. Now, just because you're a bigger person or a smaller person doesn't necessarily mean that you need to use these or need to change them out, but if we have somebody that's very light on their hands or an extremely upright position, we might wanna put the lighter spring in it so that you can actuate the future shock better. 
I have found that with my setup uh, on the super aggressive stem angle, no spacers, that the stem sits below the future shock. Now, classic physics means that that's now putting more pressure below the spring, actuating it or letting it sit further into its travel. Um, so I, if I could, I, I would um, up it. Think of this much more like a future shot or like a um, like a trophy truck shock, right? So when a trophy truck's ripping through the desert and the wheels drop below the body and they go into the dips and they come back out, right? That's what we want this to do. It's like an extreme version of a sag on a classic suspension mountain bike, except it's allowing the bike to move beneath you and the and the hands just stay put. So just picture that trophy truck down the desert, just you know. Super slow-mo, yep, that's it. So, getting back to our, our topic, a uh, very simple procedure. And if you happen to have these springs in your possession and you're mechanically inclined, make sure you use the right tools, make sure you know how to do it. You watch this video, you now do, but and then you can, uh, you can play around with it. So now, we've pulled it out, let's put it back together, let's see what we got going on. So, boom, grease spring back in there, ball it in. Now, I believe that there is a little kind of impression at the bottom. Could be wrong on this one. Okay, now take this little notch. There's a little nip, nipple on the inside there that's gonna go inside the spring. And we're gonna apply a little bit of pressure and we're gonna begin to tighten all the way back down. Boom! We'll grab our tool, clamp it. Swing it back up, there it bottoms out. Just brace it and Give it a little, just a little, little, little stiffness. Okay, boom. Now we're going to take this leaf, put it back on. We're gonna take our stem, put it back on. Our top cap, boom. And easy peasy, it's back together. Make sure the stem is straight. Now let's get back out to shredding, ripping fire roads and having a grand old time on the, the Diverge. Or if you're on a Roubaix, hope you enjoy those backwoods, B roads, alternate roads. And uh, I would highly recommend if you own a Roubaix with a Future Shock, I would highly recommend you try it with the 3032 Roubaix tire on it. Go bigger, man. Go big or go home. I think they're pretty freaking sweet. I pedal around the other day on one and uh, they're pretty dope, pretty dope. All right, that's gonna be it. We will see you guys tomorrow. Um, don't know what tomorrow is gonna have in action. I hope that it stops raining in California, which I don't think it's going to, but you never know. So we will see you guys then. That's it over and out for this Tech Talk Tuesday that gets aired on Wednesday. Peace.